and gentlemen, to an all-new reaction and review. Tonight, guys, we're checking out an animated film from 1982. That movie is Hey Good Looking. Now, I don't know much about this movie, but there is one big thing that I do know about it. This movie is directed by legendary filmmaker Ralph Bakshi, and I've been a fan of Bakshi's work for many, many years now, and I've seen every one of his animated or partially animated feature films, except for this one. This is the only, this is the only animated feature film from him that I have not seen, and... I'm actually kind of psyched. Now, the only thing I really know about this, outside of who directed it, is that there are bootleg copies of this out there, which markets it as the sequel to Heavy Heavy Traffic, another one of Bagshi's films. A very good film. If you have not seen Heavy Traffic, I do highly recommend you, you check it out. I do know that there are no connections between Heavy Traffic and Hey Good Looking outside of who directed them and the fact that they're animated. Um, but still, there are bootleg copies out there that market this thing as Heavy Traffic 2. Uh, that's really all that I know. I believe it's set in the 1950s, so I can say that I know that. Um, I, I, know, I know nothing else. I actually did watch a trailer for this, and I remember nothing about that goddamn trailer. I'm really... Really interested in this one, guys. I am really excited. I want to know if this thing is any good at all. And the only way I'm going to find that out is if I shut up and I push play. And I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Hey Good Looking. You know, guys, I'm going to say this right now. Our story so far is really fascinating, but what I'm absolutely adoring about this thing the fucking soundtrack, man. I have not found a bad song yet, and it's been almost all music. Like there's almost like there's almost like a constant stream of music in the background. I've loved every piece of it I've heard. I am gonna have to find the soundtrack to this thing. I really fucking am. Everything here is that fucking awesome, dude. Shit, yeah. Yeah, guys, it's kind of a weird thing, but I'm going to mention this. There's a character in this movie. It's Vinny's buddy, Crazy. I, when this movie started, I couldn't stand the irritating little fucker. But, you know, he hasn't changed any. He's still overly irritating, but he's kind of sort of grown on me. He's almost charmingly irritating. I didn't even think that was fucking possible for someone to, for someone to actually be kind of likable and irritating at the same time. But this character has pulled it off, and that's almost frightening. Well, guys, out of all the shit I, would, I thought I'd see in this movie, two people fucking in a big pile of hamburgers and loose lettuce and other such burger fixings, I was not expecting that. It was, it was kind of funny. It was certainly creative. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Just... Wow, that just sort of threw me off a little bit. Well, guys, that was hey good looking. Let me shut that off. Okay. So, um, I can now officially say I've seen every feature-length animated film Ralph Bakshi has ever made. I actually feel like I have accomplished something, because that is a goal I set for myself years ago. Finally made it. But now the big question is, how was this movie? How was the final Ralph Bakshi film I've yet to see? It was okay. Um, it is nowhere near his best, but it's far from his worst. It certainly falls in the, you know, like, middle. I have seen some horrendously bad Bakshi flicks. I've seen some really good ones. This one is just kind of there. Um... I, I will say, um, and we're going to talk about writing here for a minute, that this is quite possibly the darkest film I've ever seen from Bakshi in terms of content. Considering some of the shit that happened in Fritz the Cat and Coonskin and Wizards and Heavy Traffic, the fact that this thing is the darkest one I've seen, that says a lot. Like, this thing is almost pitch black at times. Um... Uh, Actually, I think, I think really what makes it feel as dark as it does is just how violently the shit just swings. Because you'll have, 
Because you'll have our main characters, Vinny and Crazy, and they're just hanging out, and they've got their fucking chicks with them, and they're having an awesome time. And then Crazy goes into one of his fits and shoots two people, and the mood goes pitch black right then and there, and it stays that dark for about five minutes. And it's just pitch black in terms of everything else you, you, you've seen up until that point. In fact, every time a character a character dies, just the whole mood of the film just swings and it and it goes from being kind of lighthearted and cool and all of a sudden boom you you feel fucking miserable because of just how well they played it up part of that is because of how the characters are written and how the dialogue is done i have to explain for those who've never seen any of ralph ralph bakshi's flicks if you've ever watched coonskin or heavy traffic or wizards or even his version of the even his animated version of the lord of lord of the rings they all have one thing in common when it comes to dialogue part of this is, part of this is about how it's directed it's also how it's written his dialogue sounds very, very natural, and this really comes out especially in the acting, because you can tell that there are multiple actors in the booth, and they're just casually talking to each other, and you'll see a lot of moments where they are, where they are, where they're basically talking over each other, and they're stepping on each other's lines, they're finishing each other's jokes. It sounds so natural, and the way that the characters move and flow on screen also helps out with this, but a lot of it really goes down to dialogue, because Ralph Bakshi has to write this, then the actors have to go out and actually make it make it work. And my god, man, the, the writing here is, for the most part, decent. I will say, there have been a lot of films from him that have had... Um, questionable moments in terms of writing like shit that you look at and you just wonder why the hell why the hell is that there why the hell why the hell does why the hell does it feel like there's something missing and that does sort of happen here mind you that isn't as bad as coonskin where it feels like no matter what no matter what version i find it almost always feels as if there have been whole scenes where they've just chopped out whole blocks of dialogue so there are lines that don't fucking like match up or you have like one person say one thing and one person answers and they don't match that honestly isn't here but it does feel like there's something missing it feels like there's like a couple of scenes missing that might help flesh out some of these characters slightly or might help with the story flow because shit just seems to happen sometimes seems to come out of nowhere and just happen or there's or there's like dialogue that should be there and isn't and mind you this honestly isn't a bad thing it it really isn't. Under most circumstances, it probably would. But this movie goes at such a rapid-fire pace that it honestly is not going to impact you too much. You're just going to be sitting there for a minute going, what the fuck's going on, before you kind of sort of catch up again. Now, mind you, that that is still a flaw, but it's a manageable flaw. It's nothing, it is nothing that's a huge, massive, oh my god, what, what the fuck kind of a thing. It's just something that's kind of noticeable. Now, um... I will say that uh, there are some characters in here who are written rather, you know, poorly. I talked about Crazy, uh, and as a character, he starts off ridiculously irritating. Now, he's irritating because he got that nickname for a reason. The character is certifiably bonkers. And by the time that you start to really, like, lighten up to him... Shortly after that is when he just up and randomly shoots two guys in the fucking street, and all of a sudden, his entire personality swings. Actually, when I mention that, shortly after that, he was poking a, he was poking a switchblade into Vinny's neck, forcing Vinny to go wherever the fuck he wanted, and the character stopped being that sort of irritating, charming, charming guy who you kind of liked. At that, at, at that point, you knew that he was unfucking stable as hell, and you really couldn't trust anything beyond that point. And then he shoots those two people in, in the fucking alley, and all of a sudden, all of the sympathy I had for the character drained. And that's probably how it was intended. Now, there are now there are a lot of real fascinating characters here. Crazy actually is, you know, one of them. As much as I can talk about how by the by the end by the end of the film I did not give the slightest fuck about the character because of just how just how violent the the uh, his like mood swings would get 
he is still a fascinating character, and Vinny, and Vinny, our main character, is a rather interesting character. Rozzy, his fucking love interest, is really cool. A lot of these characters are very fascinating to, you know, watch as they go, as they go through all of this. It's great. It's, it is fucking amazing. Again, like, the only real issue is that there are some, some scenes that seem a little bit, like, that seem a little bit, like, confused and jumbled when it comes to writing, and that could very well turn off a lot of people. There are a few other things in this movie that are going to turn off people. I'll get to some of those as we go. I guess I should mention, speaking of um, things that may uh, sway people against watching this, I know we live in a much more sensitive time, so a movie like this, um, which is set in 1950s Brooklyn and has dialogue that matches... Uh, a lot of people are not going to want to watch this simply because of dialogue choice or simply because of what you see. Because there are two gangs in, in this film. All right, we have, now we have the Stompers, which is Vinny's gang, and then we have the Chaplains, which are a black gang, an all-black gang. And because it's 1953 and it's Brooklyn, naturally, the Stompers almost always refer to the Chaplains exclusively as niggers or spooks. And I know some people are going to be absolutely turned off by that, because they like to live in a little bubble where those words never happened, even though they were commonplace in the 1950s, and Ralph Bakshi wanted to make that point abundantly clear in this movie. There is also a whole lot of dropping of faggot and fag. I know a lot of people are turned off by that. There actually are moments that openly mock homosexuals, and I know that there are some people who they, they absolutely loathe any movie which does that, which, even though, once more, it's set in 1953, and that was commonplace for the fucking time. Get over it. But I do have to warn, if you are one of those people who just can't stand kind of for the most part, historic accuracy, then this movie is not for for you. You have been warned. I, I, I wanted to mention that. That one there is a big one that is going to turn off a lot of people. There is one other big thing, but I'll get to that in a second. Acting. Uh, well, this one has a whole lot of the regular actors who have appeared in a lot of Bakshi's other films. This thing has basically the cast of Heavy Traffic and Wizards and other films... Um, and they're just all here, and they're all doing the same awesome shit which they have done time and again, and it's really well done. Again, a lot of this goes back to the fact that the dialogue sounds so natural, because you'll have two, three, four actors in the booth at once, and they are all holding a conversation in character, and it flows beautifully. And part of that, that, that right there is like the big reason why this movie feels so I guess real, all right. As strange as some, uh, as, as strange as some of the animation is going to look, I will touch on that. Um, it's that it, it's that dialogue that makes this whole thing feel a little bit a little bit more real than most other films you will see. Now that is awesome, and I absolutely adored the acting. I'm I, I, I'm really trying to think if there was any actors who sort of phoned it in, and I can't think of any. Uh, our our entire cast just turned in a stellar job here, and they helped and they helped inject life into this film. Uh, so I really don't have a negative word for acting. The acting here was solid. Now let's talk about the music. I praised the music early on, and my god, it never let up. The soundtrack to this thing, the soundtrack and the score, it's beautiful. This movie has almost wall-to-wall -wall music. There is very little silence to be found here. And everything that you hear in the background or in the foreground is amazing. The, 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 the fucking score here and the soundtrack are things of beauty. And I'm going to have to look for the soundtrack for this thing because I fucking loved every piece of music I heard. Everything in this movie was absolute gold in terms of music. So, uh, that right there is like the brightest point this movie has. Now let's talk about animation. One thing that you have to know if you're going to go into any Ralph Bakshi film is, unlike, unlike other directors, unlike other studios who will try to have a who will have one who will have one art style and one animation style throughout the entire film. Bakshi has never done that. He has always he has always let his he's always let his animators and his artists draw in their style 
and animate in their style, and Bakshi brings it all together. So if you watch enough of these, you will notice specific bits that you know are animated by a certain person, and you may not know their name, but you know that there's that, that there is that look, that there is, that there is that way that characters move and bounce, the way that, and the way, and like, the way, and, and the way that like handling and gestures are, the way all of that is handled, and you look at it, and you just, it, it just, it, it's just such like a trademark look. The problem with that, for some people, mind you, it honestly is not a problem for me, but I know it is going to bother some people, is when all of these different styles are merged in the same scene. So you will have characters drawn in one style interacting with characters drawn in a totally different style. I'm not even talking about just, like, the way that the characters are animated. I'm talking totally different styles. If you were to look up a shot of Vinny and a shot of Crazy you would not think that they were from the same movie because they are drawn that differently. And that right there is something I've always loved about Bakshi's films is that they have this almost like patchwork look to them. And it just looks amazing. And while that's something that I, I personally love, I know other people who look at it and they think it's the ugliest goddamn thing they've ever seen. So if you are one of those people who happens to think that that is a homely way to make a movie it makes it look horrible and like slipshod that is totally cool but to me that is awesome on a secondary note involving animation i want to talk about rotoscoping for a minute because ralph bakshi is someone who absolutely adored rotoscoping when he was making his his feature films and a lot of times the a lot of times rotoscoping looked kind of iffy it looked it looked kind of shit for instance he he used extensive rotoscoping when he made the lord when he made the when he made the lord of the rings and a lot of that looked like shit part of that is because they ran out of budget and they had to just paint over paint over the shit that they filmed that they were going to rotoscope with but oh well and other times it looks really cool because it's done in a stylized fashion wizards used a lot of stylized rotoscoping and it looked great but this movie has unquestionably the best rotoscoping I've ever seen in a Ralph Bakshi film. Because during the big, big rumble between the fucking Stompers and the Chaplains, the Chaplains are dancing towards the, uh, like, rumble site, and it's all rotoscoped, and it looks fucking beautiful. It looks flawless. For those of you who don't know what rotoscoping is, it basically is when you film somebody doing doing the action that you want to animate and then you basically draw over that film you actually take you actually take a film cell you place it over that and then you draw your character over that and it and oftentimes it looks it looks a little bit iffy here fucking flawless this was the best rotoscoping i've seen in a ralph bakshi film ever and it looked Fantastic. And guys, I, I actually want to go a step further. This is some of the best rotoscoping I've seen in a fucking animated film, period. This was that fucking good. Now, while now while the animation is good and the rotoscoping is great, there is a small issue with backgrounds. And this is a trivial issue, but I feel like mentioning it. There are times when uh, they use live-action footage or live-action photos for background shots, and that's normal, because Bakshi has, because Bakshi's done that countless times. He did it for Fritz the Cat, he did it for Heavy Traffic, he did it for Coonskin, he did it here. The thing is, it looked better in those films. There is a shot where Vinny and Crazy are in, like, a pool hall. The pool hall is a photo uh, of a dimly lit Pool hall. The photo is grainy and nasty and ugly and shitty. And it really just pulls you out of the movie. And there are a couple of background shots which are which are like that. Instead of actually filming it, they took a photo and it's grainy, low it's a very it's a very low fucking resolution, even even by nineteen eighty two standards photo, and it looks terrible and it pulls you out of the movie in a horrible way now thankfully that's only in about five six shots i'm talking five or six different photos used they actually use the uh pool hall shot twice but still it 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 seriously isn't terrible but it is something that i felt like mentioning 
Um, the, the only other thing I can really talk about, guys, is sound mix. And here is another minor problem, which is gonna, which is not going to impact a lot of people, but it's something which I noticed, and it's that the quality of the voice work, I'm talking in terms of actual, of actual record quality, would change from scene to scene. So you'd have certain cases where there's this massive echo behind, behind characters' voices, and you would think that that's maybe because of where the scene is set, but no, because the first half of the scene sounds fine, it sounds perfect, it sounds clear, and then suddenly we go to a different angle, we have, and we have slightly, and we have new characters brought in, suddenly everything's all echoey and kind of tinny and kind of shit, and that and that happens a lot. It actually, it actually happened in the middle, in the fucking middle of a scene, without there being a change in shot, where you will hear everything, and it's really clear, it's really cool, and then suddenly, boom, it's fucking, it's fucking echoey and tinny on the very next line, and it stands out. It stands out horribly. Now, mind you, a lot of people are not going to notice that, and a lot of people are not going to care. I noticed, because I noticed that kind of shit, could have taken a little bit of time to actually clean up clean up the audio before slapping it into the film, but sadly they didn't. And again, that's really minor, but still, I felt like mentioning it. Ultimately, guys, when all is said and done, can I recommend Hey, Good Looking? Yes. Um, I totally can. Mind you, once more, this is nowhere near Ralph Bakshi's best film. I've seen vastly better from him count, well, numerous times over. But still, it's not terrible. It's not, it is, it really, it really isn't a horrible movie, but you have to know that it's just kind of sort of a run of the fucking mill urban drama from Ralph fucking Bakshi, and he's got better ones out there. I, I, I will totally tell you, if you have the option of watching this, or watching Heavy Traffic or Coonskin, I'm going to tell you to watch Coonskin first, then watch Heavy Traffic, then watch this. This one here is certainly the like low end of that of that little threesome of films. All three of them are good, but this one certainly pales compared to the other two. If you've never seen a Bakshi film in your lifetime, I would highly recommend you start with Wizards, then move on to Coonskin, then go to Heavy Traffic, probably check out the Lord of the Rings as just a fucking curiosity, go look at, like, Fritz the fucking cat again as more of a curiosity, then maybe come to this one. Um... This one here is fine. I'm not really sure if I could recommend a purchase. I do know you can download it on Amazon. I know they've got a Amazon Instant Video link there. You can rent it. You can rent it for like three bucks. You can totally watch it there. I believe there are, there are a few people who have pirated the film and have put it up on YouTube. Go right ahead and check it out there. You really do have to see this. It is that good. Now I've mentioned a lot of Ralph Bakshi films in the past few minutes. I'm going to go watch a few of those, because god damn it, I just love those movies that fucking much. Anyway, my friends, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.